YouTube. This is Chris Klein coming to you from San Antonio, Texas at Alamo Music Center. It is beautiful outside and it is also very, very hot. So I'm glad that we're indoors today uh, and we're going to talk about microphones. I'm going to give you a little bit of knowledge about what microphones are and what they do. Uh, and by the title, I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, this guy's crazy. No, I'm not. Uh, we got you. Uh, I know that all microphones are a little bit different. They all essentially do the same thing, but they all have different constructions, polar patterns, different frequency responses, and so on and so forth. And we're going to talk about that today just a little bit and also cover some of the microphones that we have here and that we carry at Allen Music Center. So uh, hang tight and uh, let's talk about these uh, transducers that we have. Okay, so as I said, a microphone is a transducer. So what is a transducer? A transducer converts one form of energy into another. So in the case of a microphone where we are trying to capture sound, it is converting uh, sound pressure levels in the air to mechanical energy on the diaphragm of the microphone, and then that mechanical energy is turned into electrical energy, which goes on our microphone cable, and eventually to our console, preamplifier, and then into our digital audio workstation, or through a PA of some kind. The two main types of microphones that we have are dynamic microphones and condenser microphones. And dynamic microphones are probably the mics that most of us are most familiar with. Uh, you see them all the time on stages when you go to concerts. Uh, people will hold them in their hands uh, more often than not if they're vocalists, if they're singing. Um, you see them on drum sets, on horns, and so on and so forth. So dynamic microphones tend to be of a more durable construction um, they also are able to handle greater sound pressure levels in most instances, which makes them really, really great for really, really loud and percussive, percussive instruments. Excuse me. So you'll see dynamic microphones on snare drums, once again on horns, uh, in front of guitar cabinets. Think like a big Marshall JCM or an orange cabinet. You'll see dynamic microphones placed in front of those more often. Uh, than a condenser microphone or a ribbon microphone, which is another type of a dynamic microphone. So dynamic microphones can come in all shapes and sizes and be used for all kinds of purposes. Studio, live applications, sound design, field recording, you name it, they're out there for everybody to use. Uh, they're very versatile, and again, they're very, very durable in most cases. Um, they will also come in different pickup patterns. And the pickup pattern is how the microphone is going to actually pick up sound and or reject sound. Condenser microphones, on the other hand, are not, tend to be not as durable, they're a little more fragile, and a lot of that has to do with the electronics of a condenser microphone. A dynamic microphone has a thicker uh, element or diaphragm that it uses to actually pick up the sound, and the electronics are not as sophisticated. With a condenser microphone, you actually have a very, very thin diaphragm and a back plate that's charged. And as the diaphragm moves, the flexivity between the diaphragm and the back plate changes, and that's converted into sound uh, electrically. Now, a condenser microphone also requires power. Uh, we call this phantom power, or 48 volts, and some condenser microphones can actually take a battery. You can put a battery into the mic, whether it be a, a 9 volt or a double A, or maybe the battery is internal and it charges off of the phantom power, which is going to come off of your preamp or your console. Uh, condenser microphones, uh, again, tend to be a little more delicate in, the, delicate in their build. Uh, they also respond a little more quickly or they have a faster transient time, so they're more accurate than a dynamic microphone. Uh, again, the element or the diaphragm is thinner. It moves with greater ease. It's, it's, e it's easier to disrupt than a dynamic microphone. Uh, condenser microphones will also come in multiple polar patterns sometimes as well. So dynamic microphones tend to be fixed in a cardioid or maybe a super or a hypercardioid pattern, and I'll explain that to you in a second when I actually pull a microphone out what that means, where condenser microphones can have multiple polar patterns, cardioid, figure eight, omni, uh, it just depends on the microphone. Uh, they tend to be a little more expensive too at times. It just, again, depends on the microphone. All right, so let's start off with these two packages from Shure. 
uh, we've had the PGA Drum Kit 5 and the PGA Drum Kit 7. But before I really dive into it, we're going to open this box up. This right here is basically the same thing as this one. This just has two more microphones. So let's focus on this one first. So as you can see, we have seven microphones here. <clears throat> and we'll focus on these two guys right here that are, that are flanking the other five. These are PGA 81s. Uh, this is a uh, small cap condenser microphone, and these are going to be really, really great for your overheads. Now, once again, condenser needs phantom power, 48 volts, right? It is cardioid. Now, I told you I would tell you what that means, and what that means is the microphone is going to pick up in a heart pattern, cardio, cardioid, right? So it's going to pick up like this. Imagine there's a bubble going around the microphone. This here, the front of it being on access, right? The rear of the microphone is going to reject. So in theory, the microphone capsule is not going to pick up anything coming from the back of the microphone. Cool? 48 volts, condenser microphone, phantom powered, a little more sensitive, more flat, has a flatter frequency response, so it's going to be better for capturing instruments that have greater detail. Now we have two of these. So once again, like I said, our overheads, the cymbals, to be used to capture the entire drum set, right? There's any number of ways you can do this. You can do like an X, Y, you can do a space pair. It's up to you. I can't tell you how to do that. I can just give you a few pointers and let you know uh, how these can be used. Uh, so these can also be used, don't, don't get stuck in the whole mindset that this is just for drums, right? You've got seven microphones here. So let's say maybe you have a little string section that you're going to bring in to record. You could record them with the stereo pair, right, using these microphones because they're going to be a little more detailed, right? Where you have a really nice acoustic guitar, you probably want to use this, right? You don't have to. You can always use a dynamic microphone, but a condenser microphone is probably going to pick up, again, more detail, right? And it's also going to have a faster transient time, which means it's going to pick up sounds that have a greater velocity with more precision. Then we have these three little guys. These are pretty cool. These are the uh, PGA 56s. These are dynamic microphones. They don't need the power. They're a little more durable. They're going to be great for percussive instruments. You've got three of these. Pretty standard drum set configuration is a five-piece kit with a kick, snare, and three toms, right? Three toms. Again, these can be used for other things. You could use them for horns. You could use them for guitar cabinets, uh, maybe a bass cabinet. Uh, it's up to you. One of the things I like to do whenever I get a new microphone is put it in front of any source I can just to see how it's going to translate, right? Because a microphone might be marketed for X, Y, and Z, but it might also work for A, B, and C. So don't get tied into, this is only going to be for my tom-toms. You have three of these, use them wisely. <clears throat> and then we have this big boy right here. This is the PGA 52. This is a dynamic microphone once again. And as you can see, it's pretty big. It has a bigger diaphragm. And this microphone has actually been designed for capturing low-end frequencies, bass cabinets, and more specifically, a kick drum. In fact, it's been tailored, or it's been EQ'd. It's not flat, like this guy, like the 81. It's been tailored to EQ the, the input right at the source the way that a lot of engineers are already going to EQ a kick drum when they're mixing. It's going to scoop out some of the low mids. It's going to give you a little more presence so you can hear some of the click or the attack of the beater hitting the uh, batter side of the kick drum. Uh, it's, a, it's a powerful, powerful microphone. Also great for bass cabinets, uh, so don't, don't forget about that. Uh, because of that boost where it's going to pick up more of the presence or the attack, of a kick drum, it's going to pick up more of the presence of a bass guitar as well. So if you want your bass guitar to cut through a mix a little bit better, uh, you can position this around the, the bass cabinet until you find that sweet spot where you're getting a little more presence out of the guitar. And then last but not least is the PGA 57. Uh, if you look at the, the, the form factor of this, it looks very much like a vocal mic and it's similar to Shure's best-selling SM57. Um, this is going to be great for snare drum. It can take a lot of abuse. It has a little bit of a peak 
uh, where the where you're going to get more of the strainer of the snare, the snappy, the underside. If you're not going to mic the bottom uh, of the snare drum, the the, uh, the resonant side. This can also be used for vocals and other instruments. So. You know, once again, this is being marketed as a drum pack, both of these, but these mics can be used for more than just drums. You're getting seven microphones here, right? And they can be used for all kinds of different uh, musical uh, instrumental sources. So uh, don't, don't bog yourself down with, oh, these are only for drums, because uh, you're losing a whole arsenal of microphones that can be used for other, other purposes. It also comes with three clips that you can clip onto your TomTom -tom so you can mount these guys with greater ease because drums can be pretty difficult to mic, especially if you're dealing with a really, really uh, tight drum set um, or uh, you are dealing with uh, weird positioning with cymbals and whatnot. These kinds of things can really help you maneuver mics into positions that you normally wouldn't be able to get into if you have just a traditional stand, a, a, like a short boom or a boom of some kind. So we're still in sure microphone mode right now, and we're gonna talk about these microphones that I have here right in front of me. We have the ubiquitous SM57 and SM58, the SM94, the Green Bullet, or the uh, 520, we've all seen these with, with harmonica players. And then we have a couple of other microphones that we use here in our videos. Uh, you probably will recognize this little Shure Beta 181 that we use in all of our guitar videos with Matt Chris or uh, Chris McKee, our acoustic guitar videos. Uh, this is a small capsule condenser microphone. It's actually side address where a lot of the microphones that we use are end address. This happens on the side, so you, you're gonna look at it like a lollipop, right? And then the Beta 52, uh, this is a dynamic microphone. As you can see, it's pretty big, and we, are, we have been employing this for a series of bass videos that are getting ready to come out, uh, bass guitar comparisons with uh, bass, Fender bass combo amplifiers as well. So stay tuned for that, but I just wanted to show you these really, really quickly because these exist. They're pretty great. Uh, bass, kick drum, again, you can use it for anything, but that's how it's marketed. And the 181, uh, is a little more precise because it is a condenser microphone. It's great for acoustic instruments. So let's jump over here really quickly to the SM57. Um, all of us are familiar with this microphone, or I shouldn't say all of us. Most of us that are musicians um, are probably familiar with this microphone. Um, this is kind of the, uh, this is the Swiss Army knife of microphones. At least that's how I like to label it because I can tell you that I could honestly run an entire session in the studio using nothing but 57s. This is the workhorse in the studio, on stage, uh, rehearsal spaces. These are everywhere. I have never been into a professional studio that didn't have at least five of these. Um, I can't say enough good about them. They are so strong. It is a dynamic microphone. It's great for snare drum, guitar cabinets, horns, handheld vocals, handheld vocals in the studio, on stage. Um, but honestly, it's, it's gonna sound good on an acoustic guitar, on various other acoustic instruments, anything that, that has a lot of uh, high SPL sound pressure levels, so trombones and things of that nature. This microphone is fantastic. It is so, so great, it's such a treat. I have an arsenal of these myself at home, and I can't imagine being a engineer or a musician and not having one of these in my mic locker. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And the next we have the SM58. Now for those of you that go to lots of shows, this is gonna be very familiar to you. Much like the 57, just has a more robust grill for vocals to help mitigate plosives, P's, B's, D's, really, really hard T's. <clears throat> These microphones are very similar in their tone or in their, the, the way that they handle frequencies. Uh, uh, this one's slightly different. Uh, it's more tuned for uh, vocal performances, but again, guitar cabinets, drums, I mean, 
another workhorse. And it basically has the same casing as a 57 as well. I mean, these are solid steel. You can hammer nails. You probably don't want to hammer nails with them, but if you're in a pinch and you got one in your back pocket and you're working on a stage, you might do a little tap tap and you know, but I'm not telling you to do that. So the Shure SM94 is a condenser microphone. You can also put a AA battery in here as well. Now, of course, that battery is going to eventually give out. So you want to be aware that you do have a battery in here. Also, you don't want the battery to leak stuff and corrode the microphone. But it is a condenser. It can work off of 48 volts phantom power off of your preamplifier or your console. Um, if you don't have the means to send 48 volts to it, you can buy uh, boxes whose sole purpose is just to provide phantom power to the microphone so you can charge that back plate um, and that's behind the element, the, the diaphragm. So this is again uh, going to have, uh, it's a little more sensitive, it's going to have a faster transient time. It's going to be a little more precise, a little more flat than our dynamic microphones. Um, it's also cardioid, and these two are cardioid as well. I didn't mention that, but the 58 and the 57 are also cardioid, so they're only going to pick up on axis in the front and reject the most from the back. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with the Beta 58 and the Beta 57, they're actually super cardioid, so they're even more directional from the front. They reject a little more from the sides, and they pick up just a little bit on the back. Uh, this mic doesn't do that, but again, the Beta 58 and Beta 57 do, and they're actually a little bit hotter, too. They're about 4 dB hotter than the standard 58 and 57. Once again, 94, great workhorse. This is also a really, really great condenser microphone that's not going to break the bank. It's relatively inexpensive. There are condenser microphones, tube microphones that get up to the 15000 $17,000 mark. Uh, these are just below 200. These are really, really great.
And then last but not least, from all the Shure microphones that, we looked at, that we've looked at today, we have the Green Bullet. <clears throat> and this is a, a funky, fun little mic. Um, for those of you that are into the blues and harmonica, uh, this will be familiar to you. <clears throat> this is a dynamic microphone. Look at that, isn't that cute? A little green bullet. It's a dynamic microphone, but it's also omnidirectional, which means that the diaphragm, <clears throat> in theory, is going to pick up full 360 degrees, right? It also has a little volume knob or a trim knob. Now, the reason you have this is because your harmonica player might be playing a rhythm part, for instance, and they might switch to a lead. And when that happens, they're going to want to either boost or cut their volume, right? It's attached to a cable. You will notice that it has a quarter inch connector. It's actually unbalanced because most harmonica, harmonica players, excuse me, are going to plug into an amp. Our other microphones, like the 58 and the 57, they actually have a balance connection or an XLR connection. There are, there are three pins that are used. And we're not going to get into the science behind uh, an XLR connection and how it works, but it is pretty cool. So the Green Bullet, this is a favorite for harmonica players once again. Really, really cool. But once again, it wouldn't hurt to put it in front of other sources and see what happens, right? Now, the frequency response of this microphone is actually pretty narrow. Where these, so the range of human hearing goes from 20 cycles to 20,000 cycles. Most of us aren't hearing up to 20. A lot of us are probably cutting off at like 14, five to 16,000 or something like that. But the green bullet, I believe it terminates or it starts to roll off sharply at about 4.5K, right? Which is basically like the, the presence. Think like the presence of a guitar. It's going to roll off there. Think about what a harmonica sounds like or when you hear a harmonica coming through an amplifier. Well, that's what this mic is picking up. It's going to be a little more mid-rangey, a little more telephonic. Uh, that will we'll make that a word. Uh, cool mic. Put it on other sources and see what happens. So this is the Proformance PS70 Acoustic Shield. And what this does, you can see on the box, is it surrounds the microphone and it presents the microphone with an extra level of isolation from the room that you're recording in. I know that sounds kind of funky, but here's the deal. If you're recording in a bedroom and you have all right angles and glossy paint, you're dealing with lots of reflections, which are going to influence the signal that's hitting the microphone, right? And you want to have the most direct sound possible most of the time. Maybe you're trying to get the room because it sounds really, really cool. But in most cases, you're trying to isolate the microphone from the rest of the world. And this, once again, gives you an extra level of isolation, especially for those of us that are working in our, our home, bedroom, basement, studio, whatever. Uh, very, very cool. Great for vocals, great for, for all instruments. It's just great for surrounding your microphone and protecting it from the rest of the world. Last but not least, we have the AT 2020 USB microphone. Uh, you're probably wondering what USB microphone. Well, this microphone is going to communicate with your computer via USB. It's, it's, it's a condenser microphone, so it needs power. So that power is going to be fed via the USB cable. But then the audio is also going to travel from the microphone through the USB cable to your computer, which is actually a digital connection, right? So there is an analog to digital converter in the microphone. The signal is going to hit the capsule, it's going to be converted, and then it gets spat out into your computer, DAW, whatever you're using. Now, uh, Audio-Technica does make a standard version of this that's just uh, XLR that you can use in any other application, but this particular model right here is USB. Now, this microphone was actually designed for your uh, bedroom radio podcasters, uh, bloggers, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's a very, very easy setup. They can take it anywhere, plug it in your computer, and you're ready to rock. You don't need preamps and all that stuff. Everything is built right in here. It's pretty, pretty slick. All right, thanks for taking the time to watch me talk about microphones. Uh, this certainly is not all that exists. There are thousands of microphones today uh, in the universe. Uh, vintage, new, uh, USB, 
electric condensers, lavaliers, which I have on me right now. There's so many that we haven't covered. Shotgun, I mean, yeah, there are a lot. Binaural head, those are really cool. Um, if you want to find out more, there are millions of great resources online. Um, we're going to start posting some articles, some, uh, more articles on Pro Audio on our website as well, which uh, I'm going to pen. So stay tuned for that. But uh, hopefully you walked away with some good information today and learned a little about some of these microphones that we have. Um, hopefully you can see how these can benefit you and how uh, you know each one of these microphones can do a lot of heavy lifting. They're not made for just one purpose. This is not just a focal microphone. This is not just a handheld stage microphone. Each one of these microphones can do basically whatever you want it to. It's just uh, up to you and the source and how you think it's going to work best for your needs. Um, but with that being said, uh, I want to thank you again for uh, tuning in. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to be focusing on pro audio a little bit more. And uh, with that being said, be sure to play a note. It will change your life. And once again, I'm Chris Klein with Alma Music Center. And thank you very much. Uh, we will see you again soon. Bye.